Today is Easter and we're going to be talking about the whole issue and concept of sacrifice and Easter in modern living. But here is a short backgrounder before we begin. In the Christian calendar, Easter follows Lent, which is the period of 40 days, excluding Sundays before Easter. These are days characterized by acts of penance and fasting. Beyond the observance of fast and the likes, Easter is a celebration of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which happened more than 2,000 years ago and recorded in God's Word, the Bible. The Easter story is weaved throughout the New Testament. All the four Gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recorded Jesus' last days on earth and his sacrificial death for mankind. The benefits of Christ's death to Christians is unquantifiable, especially to the Christians in Africa who have experienced tremendous growth since the last century. However, the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross, which marked the end of all sacrifices, behoves on Christian leaders the need to teach the truth of Christ and practice his lifestyle of love to all. Easter therefore reminds us of numerous duties we owe one another as people who have come to faith in Christ, knowing that ignoring the marvelous work done by Christ's sacrifice amounts to profaning the blood of Christ and insulting the spirit of grace. There is no other sacrifice that shall guarantee our forgiveness of sin and eternal glory than Christ's sacrifice. Join us on Lent on Africa for more on this discussion. Welcome back. Now, joining me in the studio today to discuss Easter and the sacrificial lifestyle is pastor in charge of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Agape Mega Assembly Phase 2, Jikoi Abuja, Pastor Collins Okeke. Welcome to Lens on Africa. Thank you, Presenter. It's good to have you, sir. Thank you, Presenter. Welcome, viewers. All right, so I'm going to start with the very first question. What is the significance and cost of Easter, and why should the believer take a pause and contemplate it? Well, when the, the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is the basis for Easter, as recorded in the Bible. So when we talk about Easter, we are talking about the crucifixion of the dead and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the resurrection is the basis of, the, of, the, of Easter. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as recorded in the Gospels and in the, uh, some other books of the New Testament, is uh, something that is very crucial to the Christian faith. Okay. As a matter of fact, I would look at um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ as uh, what I would call the Gibraltar of Christian evidence. It is the central point or the, the foundation upon which the Christian faith rests. Because um, if there had been no resurrection, mm -hmm. the Christian faith would have been in vain as Paul made us to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. So the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we celebrate in Easter, is the, 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 the foundation of the Christian faith. And as a matter of fact, every Christian, every born-again Christian, and everyone that believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they owe their salvation to the atoning work, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ which was crowned with his resurrection on the third day after his death. All right, so um, we, before the Easter period, we find that many Christian faithfuls have a 40-day fast that they do before the Easter celebration, the Easter Resurrection Sunday, as it is called. Um, there's a 40-day fast. What is the significance of this fasting, and what is fasting in the Christian faith? Well, fasting is a time that uh, Christians um, give themselves to prayers and um, uh, some sacrifices of um, keeping themselves away from certain pleasures so that they can seek the face of God. 
that is um, what fasting is in okay. the Christian faith. So if I, if, I, if I understand you, you're saying it is the setting aside of something pleasurable physically yes. to be able to attain something more significant spiritually. Exactly. Okay, fascinating. Okay, so um, if that be the case, now taking us back to the story of Easter, because this all links to um, the Easter celebration, there is no Easter resurrection celebration without the death. And uh, why is the death so significant? It seemed like he talked about his death a lot. There are many things he talked about, but he constantly reminded his disciples that he was here to die, he was here to die. There were many other alternatives, many other lives, uh, a more, more peaceful way to die if you just wanted to die. Why is this all so significant, and wh what does this mean for the Christian living? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the death of Jesus Christ is the only way, and especially his death by crucifixion, yeah. is the only way to atone for the sins of man. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that uh, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Before the coming of Jesus Christ to pay for the sins of man, man had been uh, doing all kinds of atonement for himself. Mm -hmm. Man had been doing everything possible I mean, to be free from sin, but all had amounted to nothing. That is why God himself even decided to come as a man. Because we read in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the, the, the incarnation of the Almighty God is for him to be able to die, because God, as a person, God in his immortality uh, could not die. So he needed to put on the human flesh for him to be able to die, as that is the only way to atone for the sins of the whole world. Okay, fascinating. Now, you mentioned before now, and we will go into that a bit, but before he died, there was a lifestyle he mentioned. Now, we, you talked about that as you know, his sacrificial way of dying. Did he only die sacrificially, or did he also live sacrificially? Yeah, Jesus lived sacrificially all through his life. He, he lived for others. We have seen several passages in the Bible where Jesus Christ himself called us to a life of sacrifice. Okay. Before, the, 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 before the night that he was um, arrested and later crucified, he had a supper with his disciples. And in the course of that supper, he took a bowl of water and uh, he began to wash their feet and to clean them. And um, when he got to Peter, Peter said, no, I don't think you should do this to me. And Jesus said, no, if I do not wash your feet, you would have no part in me. And after he had done that, he sat down. He said, you call me Lord and Master, and mm -hmm. that is what I am. But if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ is God who came from heaven. He gave up his pleasures and palatial home in heaven to come down to the earth. He even gave up his honor allowing ordinary men to treat him the way they did mm. because he needed to achieve something for mankind. So these and some other ways are the ways that Jesus Christ showed us example of a sacrificial life. Okay, so you, if, I, if I get your take in properly, you're saying that God became man to show man how to live and to show man that what God required of him was not too much to do. Exactly. Fascinating. Now, on the issue, so to be able to do that, he had to deny himself of the way he lived, which brings us to a whole new purview of leadership and brings us to modern-day Nigeria and modern-day Africa. The concept of self-sacrifice and a serving leader, it only, it only makes its you know, appearance in Africa in the form of lip service. I am a servant leader. Um, how, how, how is this important and what lessons can leadership in Nigeria and in Africa generally draw from self-serving, uh, servant leadership? leadership and uh, self-denying leadership, sacrificial leadership? Um, Jesus Christ led example for us, both as Christians and as leaders. Mm -hmm. Because while he was in this earth, he lived a life of humility. A leader is expected to be humble. It takes humility to serve. So if a leader is going to be able to serve the people that appointed them or voted them into power, mm -hmm. they would need the virtue of uh, humility. Mm -hmm. They would need the virtue of selflessness. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, he said, I came not to be served, but to serve and give myself a ransom. In today's uh, world, we see the leaders, the political leaders, the church leaders, or people in leadership positions, you know, struggling to please themselves, to serve themselves, instead of serving the people. 
And that is why we see that development is eluded in many, in many places because the people are not doing what they should do. They are not living the right life. Okay. They are not living the life of, 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 that is worthy of a leader. They are not sacrificial. People get to power and they are looking first of all for how to please themselves and not the people that they are leading. At, the, right. at the end, they are unable to bring about good leadership. All right. Let me, excuse me, let me push this a little further. We know in, uh, in present day leadership, political leadership, uh, it takes a lot to get into position of political power or economic power. You usually need the help of several people to do so. When you get in there, isn't it common sense to first favor the people who brought you in, or rather than favoring the masses who, um, who are there and did, they helped, but some other people paid your bills to get you in there? Actually, leadership is about serving the people. Okay. That is what leadership is all about. Jesus Christ, all through his life, never lived for himself. At a point, he had no, nowhere to lay his head. Some of his disciples came to him. They said, Master, would you like to go to your house? And he told them, the foxes of the, of the forest, they have where to sleep at night, but I don't have. That's an example of a leader. He puts the interest of the people first. Although he will still have his own pleasure <coughs> or comfort, but it will derive from serving the people rightly. So Jesus Christ showed us the example, and uh, the leaders of today are being called upon to look at the life of Jesus Christ, who went about looking even until the last day of his life. Jesus was out to please the people that he was leading. All right, I wanted to break it down a little bit, this whole issue of self-sacrifice. I'll give you an example. A man goes out to work. He works hard. He, you know, he labors. He takes insult on the day, and he comes back home. He's ready to eat his meal. He won't, needs his wife to serve him. And, you know, um, if they are, the, the, in typical African fashion, if they are, let's say, six pieces of meat in the soup, four will be given to him, and the rest of the family will share too, because he is the one that labored the most. Now, you were saying that, according to Christ's example, he should put the people first what is best for all christ typically lived for god uh, so to speak for his father as he would often say and uh, in the context of a modern uh, modern non-religious setting we would say god is the greater good and so if the family is the greater good but in the african traditional setting the family exists to massage the ego of the man as some form of achievement how can we communicate this is this even possible is this logical is this sensible to the african man who lives for his deification at home Yes, we can. We in, in 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 every society, and especially in our own society here, um, the, everyone has um, one religion or the other that they, they they belong to. Some people go to church, some people go to the mosque, and uh, so on. So in all of these places, uh, people should be able to learn. They it should be communicated. The, 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 the leaders of these organizations, the church leaders, the religious leaders, should be able to teach people this virtue of um, sacrifice, I uh, mean people that are in leadership position, they should be able to learn uh, the, sac the, the sacrificial life that is required of, uh, of a leader. So it is very, very possible to communicate this to um, leaders at various levels. Yeah. Yes, it is. And um, basically, in the places of worship, the church leaders, the mosque leaders, and all the other religious leaders, they will have a whole lot of duty to do to okay. let so people I'm, imbibe I'm, I'm, the I'm virtues going to, I'm going to take a, get a practical session now. Oh, right, I'm sir. a man. I feel like I'm in charge of my house. I should have the greatest pleasure, the greatest honor, the greatest... I mean, I should be deified in my home. How are you going to tell me practically to be able to put the interest of my children, my family, my wife first before I put my own interest? It is only because it is honorable for you as a man that the people that your children, your family, they have a good life. It is only honorable to you that as a man who is the head of the home, your children and your family, your wife, they are doing well in life. Not that you alone as a man is doing well and the children and other people under you are struggling. Mm. It does not give you any honor. So based on that, the man who is the head of the home will think wider, he will think better, he will think well, that look, if I'm only after my own good, how about those that are following me? How about those that are under my care? 
Uh, you, you make an interesting point, but let, I, I'll push this a little further. Now, we see not so much self-sacrifice as we used to do before in our society today, whether it's in our homes, whether it's in government, whether it's in uh, uh, different places, political, various structures of leadership. Now, and from your explanation, the only way a man is going to, an individual, whether it be a man or a woman or a young person, uh, is going to give that kind of sacrifice is in the hope that there is a God of justice who will find a way in this life and in the next to come, uh, reward him and help him balance out on some of the things that he has lost. Now, if we do not see a lot of self-sacrifice in our society today and a sacrificial living and giving and leading, it suggests that in truth, most people in, uh, in practice, most people in our societies today don't really believe in God. We say we do. But when we evaluate our practice of our living, we find that we don't believe in God because we do not live sacrificially. We live selfishly. That means we do not believe in a God that is able to come to us and give us justice for the things that we have suffered. It is only unfortunate, and um, I think that's the irony of it. Uh, in our society, there's much of religiosity and uh, little of uh, practicing uh, those things we learn in religion. In the book of James, the Bible tells us that um, pure religion is to visit the fatherless and the afflicted, to attend, in summary, to attend to the needs of others. So it is only proper that people will do things that uh, their conscience will not prick them, that this thing I'm doing is the right thing, it is what I'm supposed to, be, to do. We're not just even looking at what is going to be the, the present benefit or the future benefit, but that this is the right thing to do, do and you do it all right we are we have just a few minutes left there so two questions i would like to ask uh, jesus was always of the he always pushed the envelope if you went somebody met him and said i don't sin i have never i don't commit fornication and he would push the envelope to say fornication is not just physical adultery it's not physically sleeping with someone else's wife or husband it is even the thought of thinking about such a thing he always pushed the envelope a young man ritual i came to him said, i've kept all my commandments and he said good now go sell all you have and give to the poor the whole con concept of self-denial to please yourself is a very real one that Jesus talked about. Um, a lot of us, we do our giving, our, our, our sacrificial living to boost our ego and make a name for ourselves as good people. And that is something Jesus in his lifetime rejected and said, this is as evil as the man who does not sacrifice at all. Can you enlighten us more about this in just a few seconds, about 30 seconds told you? Well, uh, the issue of sacrifice is, is, is crucial because, in fact, there's no religion. Um, religion is vain without sacrifice. I think every, in every religion, sacrifice is, um, is, 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 is one of the foremost things that is required. That is required. Uh, my last question, I'm going to round up because we're out of time. This is a very important question I'm going to ask. We live in a capitalistic society today. Business is about capital. I can sell more. How can I get the money out of your pocket to profit myself? How can I, you know, take from you to get into mine? Is self-sacrifice, is sacrificial living still logical, still sensible, and still practical, practical in our world today? It's a, it, 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 it begs an answer, sir. And we'll round up with that. Sacrifice in our world. I can, can, can you just come here again? Please? Okay, I said that we live in a capitalistic world where we essentially take, we do what we can to get what we can from you as much as we can for as very little that we give you. Now, that is the way the world runs business and most things that we do. But you're talking about sacrificial living, which is giving you the best I can at all the point in time. Now, these two concepts do not go together. How? So is sacrificial living, like you talked about, like Christ practice, and is it still sensible? Is it still an ideal to pursue in a world that seeks get the best for me at the lowest possible cost? Is it still visible? It is still visible, and it is desirable, and it is the right thing because um, uh, it, is, it is not all about what we get in this life. It is not all about what we acquire. It is about the legacy that we live when we leave this world. Hmm. That is the way I look at it. Well, Pastor Collings, it's been, it's been phenomenal having you with us. If you just have last few words for the audience, you can look at the camera and just talk to them and we're done. Yes, I want to thank you and uh, appeal to fellow Nigerians that this season is a season of sacrifice. 
Let us go out and see how we can live for others, how we can bless others, how we can assist others. And those, of, those people in leadership positions, we are appealing to you to use the resources and the position given to you to better the lot of the masses. We are appealing to Nigerians to love themselves. This is a season of love. And if we love ourselves, it will create a platform for peaceful coexistence, which will bring about development and progress in the nation. Thank you very much, Pastor Keke. Thank you, it's sir. It's been good having with you. Thank you very well, much. Well, my guest has been Pastor Collins Okeke, and we've been talking about sacrificial living according to the precepts of Easter and the life and times of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have...